we kind of know what it's like to uh, look at this from Frank Reich going up against the the team that moved on from him. How, how does facing Frank Reich look from the Colts' perspective? Is it as you know seemingly personal or, or revenge filled? What what's that relationship like? No, it's not revenge filled. I think the guys in the locker room have a lot of great things to say about him, a lot of respect for him, and it really was, in a sense, kind of sticking up for him. Um, I know Zaire Franklin said this week when I asked him about Frank Reich, he was like, hey, that wasn't just him going through that last season. We all went through that. You know, it was all of us kind of having a hand and not, you know, having the success that we wanted last year. But at the same time, he was like, Frank's on the other side. You know, he's an offensive minded coach, I'm a defensive player. Yeah, I know what I'm going to bring, and he knows what I'm going to bring as well. So I'm excited for that. And I think either way it goes, whatever outcome occurs, one fan base will be very petty to the other one, which is what I like. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how much – like? Ooh. Or obviously in very similar situations with with a new coach taking over what's the the temperature on Shane Steichen and and you know if 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 fan bases are going to get petty what's you know maybe can the Carolina Panthers use against Shane Steichen if if they win this one I mean I don't think there could be like any long term thing to use against him I do think that the fans here love Shane Steichen the mm-hmm. staff um around him the players really seem to have bought into his philosophy his style his edge um, a little bit different flavor than Frank Reich obviously was more kind of uh, reserved, but I do think that um, one of the criticism as of late with, with Shane is sometimes some of the clock management stuff. And then also last week, the biggest thing was John Taylor didn't touch, touch the ball hardly in the second half. You know, it, it was a weird game where we were thinking, is JT hurt? Like, why isn't the best player in your offense not touching the ball? And he was like, no, the game just kind of got away from us. And, you know, we kind of got into a throw heavy you know, offense or went up tempo and Zach Moss was doing good. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I get all of that. You're a really good play caller, all those things. But let's not make this too complicated. The best players touch the ball. And so we'll see if that's the case this week in Carolina. But I think the biggest thing is that um, both franchises have kind of moved on. But this just brings up a reason to kind of rehash everything. I was even going through some old stories like, wow, this all happened last year? Where'd the time go? James Boyd of The Athletic connecting with us on the Heaster Automo- Automotive Group hotline. He covers the Colts ahead of Colts-Panthers this weekend. Uh, you actually you, you jumped ahead to one of the things I want to talk about. The Panthers give up 140, roughly, yards rushing per game, which which leaves you vulnerable. Uh, will it be Jonathan Taylor or will it be Zach Moss? Because you know Zach Moss is still surprisingly near the top of a whole bunch of you know statistical categories in the NFL despite the fact that Jonathan Taylor's been back now for you know at least a couple weeks. Yeah, JT's been back for a month at this point and I think that it'll still be him as the lead back, but one of the weird things about this season, I think they have to kind of keep in uh mind although they will never admit it is they've lost three in a row, right? They're 3 and 5 that kind of inkling of, oh, maybe we can go on a run, that has kind of faded. And now I'm like, will they, you know, continue to split these reps because they want to preserve JT? It's like, hey, if our season isn't what we want it to be, maybe we don't ride our best players to the ground for a lost season. So I don't think there's going to be splits there. However, JT's kind of been itching for that breakout game. He had 120 yards from scrimmage against Cleveland with a great defense. You know, had a really big first half against the Saints last week. So it feels like that 100-yard game is coming. And what better way to do it than against a team that's kind of struggle against the run? Uh, going back to, to Frank Reich, I, I always think it's interesting because you know the if you cover the Colts, you you know Frank Reich so well, and then the Panthers and, and Panthers fans and Panthers uh, enthusiasts are are getting to know him. Were you surprised that he gave up play calling so early in his tenure with the Panthers? Right, and and already Thomas Brown, their offensive coordinator, has taken over. I was a little bit surprised because that's been Frank's bread and butter, right? Throughout mm-hmm. his career, he's been kind of defined by that and, and his ability to sort of build game plans around his quarterback. However, I do think he's just in a different light now, a different realm. And um, it can be a lot because it's one thing to kind of build an offense um, and call the plays for someone who is a veteran as opposed to, okay, we have a rookie quarterback back there. We have to worry about his development, also to worry about what the team is thinking, all those other things, all those other factors that are kind of uh, weighing down on him. So I think it's a different situation, whereas had he had a quarterback maybe that he's known for years or has put it on tape for years, maybe it's easier to kind of have that role. But when you don't know – not, I'm gonna say not I'm gonna, I don't want to say not know, but when you have to kind of figure out how to build some things around him, maybe it's just one less thing for him to worry about, you know, on game day as far as just managing the overall team. The The – 
three names that are going to be linked forever uh, at the top of this most recent draft. And we're talking with James Boyd of The Athletic covering the the Indianapolis Colts are Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, and Anthony Richardson. Uh, you know, we're going to have comparisons 20 years from now on how these three and their, their careers pan out. It is, you know, how do you react to, well, Anthony Richardson finishes third as a rookie by default because he he only got, it, you know, a month of play, and now we're seeing Bryce Young improve and C.J. Stroud do this. Meanwhile, Richardson's just going to be out the rest of the year. Yeah, it's tough because he looked really good when he was in there, and I cannot state enough that he is the player – of all the players I've covered from high school to the NFL, I can't look at the box score with him and, and really tell how, what kind of game he had because, you know, you can look and see and like, oh, I think he was like 11 of 25 passing against the Rams. <laughs> but for like a quarter and a half, he was the best player on the field. Explosive plays. He made this crazy 38-yard pass on the field with Aaron Donald like dragging him down. He did like this flick jump pass. And you're like, you can't teach that. And so um, disappointing, of course, that he isn't going to go up against and face – you know, Bryce Young, who also was in a discussion for, will the Colts trade up and go get him? Those types of things. However, I think that the Colts and the team and the fan base feels really good about him. Now it's just a matter of can he stay healthy? I don't think they will really change who they picked. It's just, you know, okay, we got the guy. He's shown enough. You know, he's a pretty good passer. His floor is higher than I thought it would be. But at the same time, you're concerned because he only finished one of the, I believe, four games he played in this year healthy. Other than that, he was banged up after a couple of games, had a concussion in the game, missed the game due to the concussion, then obviously the shoulder and the shoulder surgery. So disappointing, but I do think that uh, there's going to be a lot of hyperbolic uh, opinions after this weekend, good or bad. Do, do you see the irony? Because right, uh, the the Bryce Young is 5'10", 190 pounds or whatever he is, and and all of the worry was that the, the, the small guy would get hurt and he wouldn't be able to, to survive the rigors and physicality of the NFL. And you just brought it up. The guy that's you know, 6'4", 240, and he's built like Superman, uh, didn't make it out of many games and is now done for the year. Does that change the way we should evaluate the possible durability of, of quarterbacks? Absolutely. I think that's always been sort of a – um issue when we talk about athletes in general it's like oh he's big he's fast he's strong he can't get hurt yes he can i mean the colts really went through it um up close and personal with andrew luck i mean he was a freak athlete as well built like a tank and he got hurt and so you cannot expect these guys to just be invincible although you would think in a vacuum oh yeah the big guys are gonna get hurt no it's not the case and then the weird thing about anthony is that one of the things I want to push back on for even some of the fans out there is like he hasn't been doing some reckless superman um josh allen type plays <laughs> all of his plays have been relatively normal the ones he's got hurt on i mean the, the shoulder issue was just a routine tackle that happens probably every week in the nfl and for him it was just super unlucky now obviously you, he has to come back and shake that injury prone narrative which will you know be something we talk about but um it, again it's not like he's gonna be superman just because he's big that's not the case at all and honestly when you see him in person you do wonder like how? Because he's huge. <laughs> he, I, and I think personally, like, how is he the same, you know, species as me? I saw Bryce Young at the combine and I'm like, wait a second, he's my height. Like, what's going on? So, again, sometimes it's just, uh, you know, whatever God gave you, I guess, whatever you believe in as far as staying healthy or not staying healthy and all those things. But one thing is for certain is that he hasn't been taking some crazy hits. But you do have to reevaluate how you use him because. I believe the three injuries he had this year, he had like a knee thing early. You know, he had the concussion, he had the shoulder. They were all on runs outside of the pocket. So that is something that they have to keep an eye on going forward. Last one for you, James, before we let you go. Uh, a lot of UNC fans in the area were, were pretty surprised to see how far Josh Downs fell down the uh, the, the draft there and, and, you know, maybe thought it should have been a round or two higher. Uh, has has Indy figured out that he's their number one yet, or are they, they still saying, oh, it's Pittman, and even though all the targets are going to Josh Downs? No, Pittman's their number one, um, and just to give him a little bit of credit, he has dealt with a crazy, you know, quarterback, you know, merry-go-round where every year he's had a different quarterback of his career. Um, sometimes, you know, even last year, obviously, three quarterbacks in one year, and he still produced. He's their number one. I do think the reason why Josh Downs had a lot of success is because you have to get so much attention to Pittman. However, Josh Downs is a baller, and I do think that everyone around here is like, he's T.Y. Hilton Jr. <laughs> he's the best. You know, I'm so glad we got him. And he's a really good interview, a um, really special player, and just a really smart player. I think the only thing that was, you know, kind of a knock on him was his size. But I tend to lean towards production when you look at certain guys. And I'm like, okay, this guy did it, you know, at a pretty good school. 
um, for a number of years. And when Reggie Wayne was vouching for him throughout the draft combine, you figured he would be pretty good. And he's living up to the hype so far. James, we appreciate we appreciate you for taking the time to uh, to join us, and uh, maybe we'll we'll do this again, but only after you know Bryce Young has a big game and we get to we get to rub it in some faces. All right. I appreciate. It. I think the Colts are going <laughs> to win, but if they don't, just burn the tape. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks, James.